Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be on above and around watching a game between Monkuki and Vermind. Let us begin. Also, I'm Shadow 3 your host, etc., etc., etc. Let's get started. So, we have Monkuki in the north. West corner of the map and Vermind in the northeast corner of the map. Vermind is going for Grekim and Monkey is going for Vekir. Now, this map is probably not familiar to most of you. In fact, it's not very familiar to me. It hasn't been played in a very long time. So let's go over it very quickly. We have the starting bases we can see in the northwest and northeast of the map. There is a giant blockade in between to prevent skip teleport from going from one side to the other. Both players are playing Vekir, by the way, so this is going to be rather disruptive for them. But yeah, if you queue down here and then queue up back, it works out pretty well. And then there's a small amount of like, tiny little hills all the way down here. You can just see these little hills going down. Very, very slight, very shallow grade here. Just tiny little plateaus going down with some expansions nearby and a large amount of crates along the south side of the map with a bunch of mountains and a bunch of blocks between them. Now, this map has really not been played in at least a year, so... How it will fare with the new version and the new general economy paradigm is yet to be seen. Though apparently it will fare quite well with the pathfinding. Though admittedly, this construct was built for the pathfinding well before, I think it was 1.5 basically fixed it, or allowed it to be fixed completely. And that worked then, so it should work now. Not necessarily will, but it apparently is. Apparently the units are doing just fine, getting around it, no problems here. So, Vermont on the other hand, going for... Actually, he's scouting as well. Both players are sending their Shin and Teth Veers down for scouting. And... Oh, wait. Now Monkuki did get stuck. Okay, well, apparently better pathfinding strength isn't always helpful, but I don't know if this map was actually updated for that. I believe I did go through and update all of the maps to increase their pathfinding strength, but this map is really an extreme case. It is a very extreme case, and I didn't do any real tests on it. I know I'm. I don't know why I'm bringing that up a lot. I mean, pathfinding is basically fixed in this game. I just know it was a problem, like uh, up to up until about four or five months ago. I just thought I'd bring it up for that reason. Most people who have been following Acorn for any length of time will be aware of the fact that pathfinding bugs were historically a major issue, and now they are a minor issue. Really, at this point, map design is quite flexible, as long as you make sure to be careful of pathfinding strength and slightly careful about certain constructs and do test things out. That's the only thing. Anyway, both players are just having their scouts meet up. Neither player really focusing very much on particularly strong attacks one way or the other. It's actually going to be rather difficult for either player at this point to get forward. Though, admittedly, Vermind is focusing much more on economy than Monkuki is. Monkuki has far fewer RPs. The Monkuki is... Well, no, Monkuki is further back in the past. He's about a minute down from where Vermind is. And Vermind is... Probably gonna get a depot within the next minute or so and then build some vehicles and try to skip them in. Monkuki might do the same. Though he's not really moving that quickly. He's maybe he's waiting for Vermine to act, see what Vermine's up to. Probably very focused on this right here, making sure that he has the upper hand in this scout battle down here. And he doesn't. It's just worth pointing out that he really does not. But he can hope, I suppose. But yeah, the Shinveer is going to go down. The Tethveer, however, is actually suddenly stronger against ground than the Shin... Oh, no, the Shinveers are both down. The only one's left, sorry. The Tethveer, however... Let's see, they are actually slightly weaker against ground than the Shinveer are. What do I think? Of course, the Tethveer are the anti-ground unit. The Shinveer are the generalists. And Monkuki continued to build his economy up, but he is a bit behind from Vermine. And actually, even at the same time, Vermine has more RPs. Monkuki just is not as focused on RPs... He's probably trying to get past these scouts here to set up his typical foundation rush. But it looks like these two units will be basically killing each other off. It's going to be possibly a simultaneous death. And no, Monkuki just barely wins out. Just barely. His Shin Beer was just a bit quicker on the draw and wins that fight. So we can actually go for foundation rush. Vermin on the other hand, 345 mark. There is that depot I was talking about. And... Monkuki, on the other hand, no depot yet. Well, sorry, it shouldn't say depot. It's not a depot yet. It's just a foundation. At 326 mark, there is a foundation. It's probably going to become a depot. I'm guessing that this four-minute mark construction mark right here, that's probably the depot. And it looks like Vermine is still trying to re-micro this out to try to get the upper hand in this attack. I don't think a Shinveer is going to win out, though. 
It's a little hard to say, but I don't think it will. On the other hand, the Teth Beard... Yeah, it looks like because the Teth Beard died first, that... No, I don't know. I mean, it's just every one of these fights, it... I don't think it'll turn out different. I think Vermind is going to lose every time. I think Monkey is going to be having the slightly faster Shin Beer. And there's that depot I was talking about. Slightly earlier than I expected, the 342 mark. I thought it was the four-minute mark construction here, but nope, that's something else. That is something different. But this depot here, that is going to be the thing to look at. That is going to be very important. And once it's built up, it will matter a great deal. Because, of course, that's what Vector primarily uses. That's what Vector gets most of their stuff, is vehicles. And that's from the depot. So once this is up and running, which it is, we should start seeing some vehicles be built. And the Zion Veer might become a Zion Pulsar. Looks like it probably will. They, He's completely built up his main base. He is starting to expand towards the southwest, that tunnel expansion there. And there we go, a Zion Tercher being built up. Wow. I have not seen this in a long time. Although... I do remember one time playing on this particular map with Zion Churches doing some very clever skip micro to avoid projectiles. Right about here, actually. I started in the no northeast corner of the map and I was attacking. I can't remember what my opponent was. I think my opponent was Grekum and he was using Pods and I was trying to dodge their bombs, but... Or dodge their missiles, rather. But I digress. That was a year and a half ago, anyway. Anyway, Zion Turcher being built up. I have not seen these guys in a very long time. They're the only ground units that can cloak anymore. And... Normally, they aren't built up a whole lot, though. I just... You kind of don't see them a lot, because most people will just focus on getting either air units or focus on getting a lot of Zion Pulsers. Because Zion Churches can tank a lot of damage for their cost, but they don't have a particularly powerful attack. They have 51 damage per 5 seconds per ground, so about 10 per second per ground, while Zion Pulsers have about 12 per second, and Zion Pulsers also have Splash. However, Zion Pulsers have 190 health to Zion Churches 300 and lack cloaking. So... Zion Turchers are a pretty good strike force and a great tank, but they aren't quite as good as half a dozen Zion Pulsers. And given the cost difference, it's not surprising. I mean, Zion Pulsers is 65-15 compared to 108-45. That is a huge cost difference. That's about that's pretty much double the cost to get a Zion Turcher. And two Zion Pulsers, they won't beat a Zion Turcher directly because Zion Turchers take much lo less damage from artillery units, but used in the same battle two Zion Pulsers will probably do better than a Zion Turcher. Hard to say, though, sometimes. And here we see that the units are being skipped across here, but they aren't quite able to do so, having to just path around the rock here because they can't skip through it. This is actually being discussed a bit in the forums about possibly having skip going around, doing pathfinding calculations as well for this sort of thing, but that'd be kind of cool. Actually, I think that's a good idea. If it comes up, if it's feasible... Because this sort of map design is fully intentional. This is meant to stop Skip Teleport from directly going through, so that flying units are still relevant, such as this Shin Turcher coming from Mankuki, who is going to be attacking directly with that while the Zion Turcher teleports in, and there it goes! With... actually, the Shin Turcher is able to get rid of this... You know, the Zion Turcher is able to get rid of this expansion, doing quite a bit of damage, closing up all of the RPs very nicely, and the Shin Turcher out of range, so it can't easily detect the Zion Turcher to stop it. Now, Monkuki jumping back about a minute down from when he was looking, possibly keeping his Shin Turcher at home this time to defend against this attack. He does have it in production. It's just about done at the 552 mark. Now, back up to the 657 mark, when the Zion Turcher is being built up, it looks like the Shin Turcher actually has been destroyed. I don't think so. I think the Shin Turcher must have jumped back to base. This is... No, that can't be right. Shin... Let's check the Shin Turcher here. It looks like it's getting quite a bit of damage from the Teth Pulsar down here, which... Well, never mind going for all of the Grek... All the Vector units. I haven't seen... Like I said, Zion Turchers in a long time. Teth Pulsars I haven't seen... I've seen a bit more recently. I wouldn't be surprised if a Shin Pulsar came up. No one ever builds those, but... Hey, at the rate it's going. I mean, we've seen Shin Halcyon this last game. That was from Monkuki. Would almost not be surprised to see Shin Pulsars. Actually, I'd be pleasantly surprised to see Shin Pulsars. Because I like Shin Pulsars. I mean, it's... I don't know why I like Shin Pulsars, because they really aren't that... They're generally not considered that cost-effective compared to their ground counterparts. But still, it's... You just don't see them anymore. You just really don't see them. And if you had to fight an air war, and you weren't sure your opponent is... Well, I guess you had to fight an air war, you had to use Teth Turchers, of course. But... And Teth Turchers not really able to do too much, because the Zion Turcher here is cloaked. And nicely distracting the, Zion, the attack from the Zion Pulse. The Tethers are actually not going over to deal with this. Vermind is doing a great job 
dealing with this here and also getting rid of this Shin Turchin without too much issue. And Shin Turchin running away, so Vermind able to expand in peace while disrupting Monkuki's own expansion plans. And getting rid of this Teth Turcher as well. Shin Turcher finally coming around to deal with this Zion Turcher. Or at least try to deal with the Zion Turcher. Monkuki at the 750 mark. He's really focused on his air units. And it's one thing to keep in mind. I've noticed actually in the last game too. He really likes his air units. And this game is no exception. He has the Shin Turchers up. He has the Teth Turchers up. He's continuing to build both. Shin and Teth Turchers at this point. Now on this map it's not surprising since the center of the map is designed to make flying units more relevant than Skip Teleport. But, even with that, even with that, I still am surprised that he's building so many air units. And also a bit surprised that Vermind isn't building that many anti-air units. He's getting a Teth Turcher of his own, and he had a Teth Pulsar earlier right here, but... Really, he can see that Monkuki is very much focused on getting air units, and he is not really responding to that, surprisingly enough. Now, Monkuki on the other hand, taking a lot of damage, partly due to his lack of Shin Turchers and, well, okay, he has one in his main base, which is able to get rid of the Zion Turcher. Nicely done there. But I'm a bit surprised that Vermind isn't focusing a bit more on anti-air. Not entirely surprised, since that's kind of putting your eggs in one basket, but still a bit surprised. In fact, I'm a bit surprised he isn't focused on just mostly air himself? Hmm. Good question. In fact, neither player building a whole lot of units. Both players are kind of saving a lot of money in the bank, making sure they don't lose too much. Not sure if it's a chrono energy restriction, because they are running low on chrono energy. They are both macroing in the past. But they're also not really seeming to commit that much. Okay, there's another Teth Pulsar. That's, that's not bad. And Vermind does not have skip teleport on most of his units. On the other hand, Monkuki doesn't have skip teleport on his air units. He had, or usually gets it on his ground units. But it isn't really known as air units, and actually in this map, it's... Well, it doesn't, for air units, it would be faster. For ground units, it makes no difference. And now the battle has been joined somewhat, and Monkuki is going to go down here. He does not have the upper hand at all, losing two units for the price of basically one. And his units are not in place. They, the Veer dropping out are running into the mountains and crashing on impact, not managing to survive the fall to the ground. So that's even more effective. So I don't know how that's going to work out for that, but I do know that it's going to be really difficult for that to be dealt with. Because, honestly, Monkuki does not have all that much in place. He has Gatek being built up, but not that many units being built up. Vermind has about the same strength of economy, but Vermind also has a much better counter setup. And now Monkuki does have his units over top of flat ground. The Veer units will land, they will be able to continue fighting, though they won't last particularly long. And this Teth Turcher, why is it back here? Monkuki, at his point of view, has not moved his Teth Turcher in a position. What is going on? Why is he not moving that further in? That is bizarre. I do not understand. Okay, there he is. Now, 1027 mark, he has moved it further in. Though it is almost operating more as a distraction than anything else, it's not really helping out, I'm afraid. So I don't see that being a particularly effective target. And Monkuki trying to do what he can. Keeping his Ted Thurcher kind of out of the way, but even then, it's not really that great. And here, a foundation being built up. This is going to be the Slipgate. And we see Monkuki teleporting everything back. He's lost his Ted Thurcher, though. He does have his Shin Thurcher. That is going to be a difficult thing to work around. I mean, he can chronoport this stuff back, and he probably will, but it's going to be tricky. Like, I just... I just don't see this working out. Monkuki really doesn't have anything to deal with the amount of anti-air that Vermont has built up. And there we go. There it is. The Shin Pulsar. I knew it. I knew Vermont would build. I, I called it earlier on. I called it. He built a Shin Pulsar. He is going for every unit. In fact, this party right here is one Zion Pulsar short. Oh, yeah. One Zion Pulsar short of being every single Tier 1, Tier 2 vehicle. He doesn't have Halcyon class, so all the vehicles that Vermine can build, if he had a Zion Pulsar in this group, would be in that group. And he has built a Zion Pulsar so far this game, so he has currently built every single non-Halcyon class unit. And he's not getting Halcyon class yet. So, that's... you can kind of... Not building all those units, though admittedly in Halcyon class, the Shin Halcyon is the unlikely one. The other two, those are pretty commonly built, once you get to Halcyon class. Teth Halcyons, once again, great for tanking against air units, and Zion Halcyons are just 
wonderful overall. They're great generalist units. Jin Halcyons are okay. For their cost, they aren't great, but they are flying generalists that have 400 health. So they're not to be trifled with. Just at that tech level, it's a lot of their strength does come in the fact that they are flying units and they have Nana in fact, if you have specials. Oh, actually Mon Cookie pointing out in chat that his tertiary was just fine. It it survived. Okay. Well done. Because that is going to be quite a quite an important aspect for the upcoming battle. Bunch of Zion Pulsers, a bunch of Shin Turtles and Tet Turtles. Now, this is... Monkey will probably show us the reason... Oh, whoops. Monkey will probably show us the reason why people commonly don't build one of every type of unit. As equal opportunity as that is, it's also a little bit disadvantageous as a result of the fact that... Really, just getting a bunch of Zion Pulsers does the trick. Zion Pulsers, Shin, Tur Shin Turtles do a great job. Zion Pulsers, Tet Turtles pretty much deal with everything, ground and air. I mean, Vermine has a great mixed force in the sense that he has one of every kind. But, as you can see, the Shin Pulsar first to go down, too. So, yeah, that's kind of why people don't build them too much. Against Teth Searchers, they aren't great. See, Shin Pulsars do a great job fighting other... Fighting anti-ground air units or anti-ground ground units. And if the unit isn't particularly good against air, the Shin Pulsars do a great job of fighting it. And you don't have to specialize to it. You don't specialize to a Shin Searcher or a... Teth Torture, I mean, or, yeah, basically that's what you'd be, the other options are. See, so if a flying unit's able to deal with ground and air moderately effectively at a relatively cheap cost, I think it's like 80, something like 80, 50 or something like that. So, it's not a terrible cost, it's just that, really, if you're going to be investing that cash, especially since you need the aerial control center in the first place, you almost might as well just go for the Torture class. There's no additional cost to that after the aerial control center, other than the fact that their costs are higher. And it looks like Vermine actually taking quite a bit of damage in his base, but at the same time, he is dealing quite a bit of damage to Monkuki. Monkuki does have Halcyon class of his own, does have a Teth Halcyon, two Teth Halcyons of his own. However, his main weakness being that his Teth Halcyons are mainly fighting ground, as are his Teth Turchers. Main strength, however, being this Debo here, and Monkuki doing a great job of making sure that the Teth Halcyons don't die, and his Zion Halcyon being built up, that will finish the job. Vermind does not have a whole lot going for him, and... Is there a slipgate up? Yes, there is. A slipgate has been built for Monkuki. That will be key. That'll be very key. I think after this point, it's just going to be game. I don't think Vermine has much of a chance at this point. He is doing a great job in defense, but even with that, there's just so much damage being dealt from Monkuki and so much damage that can be dealt from Monkuki and the Chrono Porting. And this big force that came in doing a great job, but not nearly enough. Its main strength has been this Cloak Scion Torture. That's been doing a lot of damage, but even with that, it's still just messing up. It's really not doing it effectively enough. So, nicely done, but once this cloak runs out, which actually has run out, or at the very least, something came into detect, but yeah, Monkuki won't have to worry about this for very long. He doesn't have a Shin Turcher coming out. It looks like, yep, the cloak just ran out, and the Zion Turcher is going down. Zion Halcyon able to finish it up, and that is, that's it. Romine has his own Chrono Porter. He is going to be sending back, or Slipgate rather. He looks like he's going to be sending back these Shin Turchers to try to deal with this force that came in here. Not a great idea, honestly. Zion Hell seems to be a better option. Zion Pulsers, a bunch of them might be a better option. But no, he's Chrono Porter in the back. He is teleporting them in to try to help out this assault. And it probably won't work, honestly. I mean, he's trying. He really is. Distracting this Ted Searcher a little bit. And we might actually see some change to how this pans out, but it looks like it's really not changing too much. The main difference is going to be that this, these units can be re -micrated. Actually, one of them is going down. Can't go back into the depot. One of the Teth Turchers, sorry, Teth Halcyons ultimately dying. But the other one not dying, not taking that little extra bit of damage that would invalidate the earlier orders to jump it back into the depot, which is really what it needed. However, the fact that there's one fewer Teth, Tur Teth Halcyon might still change things up enough. But it's really hard to tell. It looks like, even with that... I... The heck's going on here? Okay, something weird just happened for a second, but... It looks like... It looks like Monkuki has basically lost that Teth Halcyon just a bit. But even then, he is sending back some forces. He is at the Implemental Pass as well. Has Chrono Porter and Teleport back some forces into Vermine's base to try to get rid of his own Slipgate. And if he succeeds in doing so, he will stop Vermine from dealing any damage. And it's hard to tell how well that'll work out. Vermine, his Chrono Porter... It's really the green time that tells us the truth on that one. Actually, the red time will tell us the truth on that one. Monkuki jumping back behind it to see what is propagated from it. And it looks like it's what we saw already. But even then, that's not particularly promising. 
Though we had been saving that Tether Halcyon already, and this Zion Halcyon doing a pretty decent job. Actually, doing a very nice job here. Helping take care of the base, so this is something we saw before, and it looks like Monkuki is going to take this. Yep, that is pretty much going to be it. Monkuki able to defend his base well enough from the looks of it, but even then, actually, this has worked out a bit worse than before. Design Halcyon is able to do what it can, but Vermine had a small window as a result of that attack. But even with that, this Zion Halcyon, well, starting to take out, actually starting to attack these Shin Turchers. If it doesn't kill the Slipgate, it will at least kill the Shin Turchers, which will stop that assault from dealing a whole lot of damage. And yes, one of the Shin Turchers going down, actually the other Shin Turchers getting too distracted to Chronoport. Vermind, his Chronoports basically failed completely. He does have another Chronoport in store at the 18 minute mark, down to the 15 or so minute mark. But that's not going to be enough. However, Monkuki, it looks like the damage he's dealt has been minimized as well as a result of an earlier Chronoport. And Vermine jumping back to see what's going on with that, and it looks like the blue time of just passing by. And even with that, Design Halcyon is still dealing some damage. It looks like Design Halcyon had taken some damage in here in this base, but as it stands, there's not a whole lot of damage that can be really dealt effectively. The Shin Churchers weren't able to go back, they didn't survive to go back, and the depot getting destroyed to stop them completely. Vermind unable to chronoport his units back, and everything is getting worse and worse for Vermind on every iteration. He does have that one more chronoport, I think he was planning on it, but I don't think that's happened. I think that's done. So, given that, I say Monkuki has won this game, and actually, okay, even if Monkuki doesn't get out of this, look at his resources. 1200 LC, 200 QP. He's running a little low on LCRPs, sure, but... This is game. Vermine has no way back to save this. His slipgate, last thing to go down. Insult to injury on that one somewhat, but that is game. Monkuki has taken this. Vermine had a pretty decent chance. I did like to see the fact that he was using all the units. That was kind of nice. That was kind of cool. But not particularly effective. And here's the last little vestige of chronoboarding from Vermine. A Shin Turcher trying to do what it can, but even then, it ceases to exist before it can even manage to make any difference. Vermine will be throwing in the towel now, basically. Yep, there he goes. GG. That is game. And I'll be back with another one shortly, so stay tuned.